Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I am Prabhat Ali and today I'm going to showcase you one of my projects which I have recently done. I have uploaded this project in my GitHub repository and the name of my project is uh, Deploying ImageNet Pre-trained Models as a Flex Web Service. So the project mainly focuses on the deployment of deep learning models. So talking about deployment, so what is deployment? So in any machine learning and data science project, machine learning engineers and data scientists first build the model and they just validate their model against some test cases. So they just keep on validating their model against such test cases until they get good accurate models. So good accurate models generally means models with higher prediction accuracy. So after getting the models with higher prediction accuracy, they just use that model in the production environment, which we call it as a deployment. So deployment generally means integrating the accurate machine learning models into the production environment. So coming back to the GitHub page, here in this repository, we are going to deploy pre-trained Inception version 3 model as a Flex Web service which was trained on ImageNet dataset. So talking about ImageNet dataset, so ImageNet dataset is a huge collection of databases consisting of more than 14 million images with thousand different classes. So if you want to know how ImageNet dataset was created, so here is a link to the video. So you can just click on this link and get the idea behind the creation of the ImageNet dataset. So here in this project, we have used the pre-trained weights of Inception version 3 networks. What is Inception Net? So talking about the Inception Net, Inception Net is also called as Google Net, so which was developed by the developers of Google in the year 2014. So why we are going to use the Inception version 3 pre-trained models in this project? So, so we get the answer to this question by looking at the comparison chart on the state-of-the-art architectures on ImageNet challenge. So Inception Net was released in the year 2014 with 93.30 top 5% accuracy with only 6.4 million parameters. So let's look at the architecture of Inception version 3 network which we have used in this project. So we are not going to uh, discuss about this architecture in this uh, video. Uh, so you are requested to uh, look at the architectures of Inception version 3 network in Google or any other YouTube videos. So up to now we have explained some of the theories and philosophies behind this project. So now we are going to run this project. So let's get started. In order to run this project, we are going to follow some of the steps. Uh, here are some of the steps. So let's head on to step number one. So in step number one, we are going to show the output video uh, demo of this project. So let's see the demo. So guys, this is the output demo for this project. So since we are deploying our pre-trained model as a web service in Flex, so which is a web app, so this is the interface for our web app. So and in this app, we are allowed to choose and post the image or in picture. And there is a predict button which on clicking can predict whether what is in the image or in picture. So suppose we choose a picture of a banana and hit the predict button and then our model will predict that the prediction is a banana. So let's see how it does so. So we are going to choose a file and we are going to post the picture of a banana and hit the predict button so this is the prediction it is saying that the prediction is banana so let's go on with another images so let's choose another image uh, maybe the picture of a cauliflower and hit the predict button and see the prediction so the prediction is saying that the prediction is a cauliflower isn't it cool yeah cool so don't worry guys, in the end of this video, we are going to build this project in our own computer. So don't skip and watch it till the end. So guys, just now we have completed step number one. From now on, we are going to build this project on our local computer. So all of you are requested to follow the instructions with me. So if you skip any part of the video uh, from now on, then you are not going to get the same output as I'm having on my computer. So let's head on to step number two. So on step number two, we are going to download the repository from my GitHub account on our local computer. So let's do this. Coming back to my GitHub page again. So I have uploaded uh, this project in my GitHub repository. Uh, so don't worry guys, I'll be sharing my GitHub link in the YouTube description. So now we are going to download this project in our local computer. So how we are going to do so? 
so we are going to do so by just clicking on the clone button and we just click on download zip and it will download the zip file for you so guys we have successfully downloaded the zip file in desktop so this uh, complex uh, is step number two so now let's head on to step number three so in step number three we have to extract the zip file into the desktop so how we are going to do this so for extracting the zip file into the desktop we just have to double click here and we just have to click on extract button and we just have to select the desktop as the path and we just have to click ok and it will extract the file in the desktop so here we just completed step number three uh, that is we have successfully extracted the zip file into the desktop so this is the project file that we have extracted so until now we have successfully completed steps one two and three so now we are going to do step number four so in step number four we are going to open the imagenet weights.ipynub notebook in google collab and download the weight files and save it in our project directory so let's do this so imagenet underscore weights.ipynub is the file that we are going to upload it in google collab and run every code inside this file so let's upload this file in google collab so for uploading the notebook file in google collab so we just have to open the chrome browser and in the address bar just type collab.traces.google.com and hit enter so this is the interface that google collab opens for us so here we are going to upload our notebook file in Google Collab. So for doing so, we just have to go here and upload and we just have to choose our notebook file and we just have to open it and this will upload our notebook file in Google Collab. So this is the notebook file that we have recently uploaded in Google Collab. So now we are going to download the pre-trained ImageNet weights by executing all of these codes. So before executing all of these codes, I would like to explain all of these codes. So here in the first two lines, we have just import two libraries. Number one is TensorFlow and number two is NumPy. And in the second line, we have just print out the version of TensorFlow that we are using. And in the third line, we have import the Inception version 3 model. And in fourth line, we just initialize our model with the ImageNet weights. And finally, we save the pre-trained ImageNet weight file in H5 format. So I assume that you have understood the code. So now we are going to execute the code. So for executing the code, we just have to go here and run the cell. So now this cell has been executed. So now we are going to execute cell number two in which we are going to print the version of TensorFlow we are using. So then we are going to import Inception version 3 model. So in cell number four, we are going to initialize our model with the ImageNet weights. So this will download the ImageNet weights uh, from this URL. So finally, we are going to save the ImageNet weights. So the weights is saved here. So now we are going to download these weights in our computer. So by just double clicking in it. So then it will download the weights on your computer. So it will generally take some time. So be patient and download it. So this is the weights file which we have recently downloaded from Google Collab. So this file resides in downloads location. So we just have to copy this weights file from this location into project directory. So by doing this, we just have to copy and this file and then pro open our project directory and then paste here so this completes our step number four so let's head on to step number five so in step number five we are going to open anaconda prompt and create and activate our new virtual environment so let's do this so i have opened anaconda prompt in my computer so this is the anaconda prompt window so now we are going to create a new virtual environment for our project and activate it so let's create a new virtual environment for our project so in order to create a new virtual environment for this project so just go to anaconda prompt and just type conda create yen the name of the virtual environment let's say deployment for this project and the version of python you are using so let's say python 3.6 for this project and hit enter and it will download all the packages and metadata from the internet so after some time you will be asked whether you would like to proceed or not 
So just proceed by typing Y and it will create a new virtual environment for you. So the name of the new virtual environment will be deployment here in this video. So now we have successfully uh, created a new virtual environment named deployment. So now we are going to activate our virtual environment. So for activating the virtual environment, we just have to type Conda activate and virtual environment name that is deployment and hit enter. So here, so this shows that our virtual environment has activated successfully. Since we have successfully created and activated our virtual environment, so this completes step number five. So let's move on to step number six. So in step number six, we are going to install all the requirements and dependencies for this project. We can see all the requirements and dependencies of this project in requirements.txt file. So let's open requirements.txt file and see what dependencies are required for this project. In order to see what dependencies and requirements we need to install for running this project, we first need to navigate to our project directory. Then we need to open requirements.txt file. So these are the requirements and dependencies that we need to install in order to run this project. So for those who do not have NVIDIA graphics on their computer, they are suggested to replace TensorFlow GPU with only TensorFlow. So since I am having NVIDIA graphics on my computer, so I am going to stick with TensorFlow GPU. So let's install all these requirements and dependencies on our virtual environment. So let's do this. So in order to install all those dependencies in a virtual environment, we first need to open Anaconda Prempt and activate our virtual environment by using the command conda activate and the name of virtual environment we are using for this project that is deployment and hit enter and this will activate the virtual environment for you. So we have successfully activated our virtual environment. So now we are going to change our working directory to our project directory where requirements.txt file is located. So for doing this, we just need to navigate to our project directory and then checking whether requirements.txt file exists or not. So here requirements.txt file exists in this path. So we just need to copy this path by using control C command. And again, coming back to the Anaconda prompt and just type in command CD and just paste the path you just copied and hit enter and this will change our working directory to our project directory where requirements.txt file is located. So finally, I'm going to install all those dependencies in my virtual environment. So this can be done by just using a pip command. So that is pip install r requirements requirements.txt and press enter and it will install all those dependencies from requirements.txt file. So this process will take some time depending on the speed of your internet connection as it downloads all those requirements from the internet. So I'm going to skip the video during the installation process and I'll be back after all those installations are done. Hey guys, I'm back and we have successfully installed all those dependencies in our virtual environment. So this completes our step number six. So now we are just one step closer in order to complete our project. So now let's move on to step number seven. And in step number seven, we have to run a Flag server in order to start our web app. So here in this project, we have used Flag server as a platform to host our pre-trained model. So to run the Flag server, we have to run app.py script in Anaconda prompt. So before running app.py script in Anaconda prompt, I would just like to explain the course that is written inside the app.py script. So from line number one to line number 11, we just import all the necessary libraries that will be requiring for this project. Then the block of code from line number 15 to line number 25 is only useful for those who have NVIDIA graphics and CUDA installed in their system. And for those who do not have NVIDIA graphics and CUDA installed on their system, they are just requested to comment this block of code. Since I am running this app with NVIDIA and CUDA support in my system, I'm just going to uncomment these blocks of code. Then in line number 30, we just define our Flex app. So after defining our Flex app, we just provide the path to the pre-trained image networks by initializing a variable called model underscore path. After that, we just load our model from the model underscore path and then summarize our model and finally call the make predict function on our model in order to load the predictions ahead of time.
Then we define a function called model underscore predict which takes in image path and model edge argument and returns the prediction done by the model. So inside the function, we first load the image from the image path and convert the image to a target size of 299 plus 299 pixels. Then we convert our image into an array and expand the dimensions of the image along the horizontal axis. So this helps to fit our input data into our model. And after that, we are going to pre-process our image by using the pre-process underscore input function. And finally, we are returning our prediction by calling dot predict function on our model. Since we are going to deploy our pre-trained model as a web app, we need to create some web pages and the routes to navigate to these pages. So this block of code will create a default route to navigate to the index.html page. So here we are building a web app in which a user can post an image of an object and the model be able to predict the class of an object present inside an image. However, in Flux, by default, routes only responds to get requests. So we need to change this behavior by supplying method equals to post argument in our routes decorator. Then we define a function called upload which will upload the image sent by the user through post request and then save the image in uploads directory. So we finally make a prediction in these lines of codes and display the result in predict.html page. So finally, these two lines of code are used to run our Flex app in default route that is index.html. Up to now, I have successfully explained all of the code that is written inside the app.py file. So now let's go back to Anaconda prompt and let's run this file and see the output. So let's do this. So guys, we're back again in Anaconda prompt and now we are going to run app.py file in our virtual environment. So we need to consider two things before running this file. So number one is we have to activate our virtual environment and number two is we have to change our working directory to our project directory which I have already done here. So now let's run app.py file by executing the command python app.py and press enter and it will take some time for executing this file and after this file has been executed successfully and uh, we will get output like this and our app will be running in this URL. So here we have successfully executed the file and now our app is running in this URL. So let's copy this URL and open the Google Chrome and just paste the URL in the address bar and press enter. So this is the index.html page that our app serves to this default route. And this is the uh, front end layout for this app. So in this app, the user is allowed to choose and post the image of any object and the model is capable of predicting what object is present in an image. So let's choose the picture of our trees and hit the predict button and see what our model predicts. So this is the prediction and our model has accurately predicted that the image contains an ox trees. So let's choose another image. This time, maybe the image of an ice cream and hit the predict button and see what our model predicts. So here is the prediction and again the model has accurately predicted that the image contains an ice cream. So congratulations to all of us. We have successfully built this project. I hope you like this video. If you find this content useful, feel free to share this to your friend. And if you enjoy this video and would like to see more, remember to subscribe my channel and hit that bell icon. So see you guys in my next video. Until then, stay safe, be positive and keep learning.